everybody. My name is Andrea of MacAndreas.com. Today we are sitting here with Gaston White, the founder of the cigar company named Mr. Cigar. Yes. How are you today, Gaston? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So how's 2018 treating you so far? It's actually great. It was a great year. I had a great last year, and this is like even better. So it's, it's going great. Right. So I saw that you bought some cigars for us. Yes. I brought my uh, coffee cigar. This is like a 60 ring, four inch cigar. Okay. Um, this is a kind of a, uh, what is not kind of, it is a Connecticut wrap. I don't know if you know about cigars. No, I'm not that knowledgeable <laughs> about it. And this is why we have you here with us today to give us a little lesson yeah. on a few things. Yes. So I don't know how far you want me to go back, but um, originally, originally uh, Connecticut was from New York. All tobacco was from New York. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they started doing the trade with the boats and the Indians and the the, uh, pilgrims and everything like that. They bought the seeds and planted them everywhere else, and that's how tobacco got around the world. So they kept it, uh, called it Connecticut because it was from New York. So for people that don't know that, that's why they call it Connecticut rap. Really? That's Connecticut interesting. Yeah. Because as, when you automatically think about a cigar, you automatically think about a Cuban cigar. Yes. You don't, wouldn't think like a cigar was based out of here in the U.S. Yes. You think it comes from Colombia, makes the best cigar. That's what, to me personally, I would usually think of. Yeah, see, I I don't like I don't want to hate on uh, Cuba. I don't want to hate on Cuba, but Cuba is uh, Cuba. I said Colombia. Cuba, <laughs> Cuba. I'm getting my countries mixed it's up. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> but people um, have a perception that that's the best cigar only because that's like saying uh, since a woman is mm -hmm. for me, I want you. You don't want me. Mm -hmm. What what happens? We use I want you more because right. you don't want me. Right. So it was when they Kennedy and them uh, cut off the trade is when everybody was like, oh, Cuba, because rich people will go out there and like, kind of come back and go, nah, 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 nah. You know, <laughs> so it made it uh, a real special cigar when it's really not, because actually mm -hmm. tobacco, to me, sorry, it's trash. Really? And it's a horrible tobacco. Um, I, I'm not going to say horrible. It's all in your taste buds. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. A couple other people I know don't like it. But um, it was more, like I said, because I can get it and you can't, because you couldn't trade. You couldn't buy in, in, uh, in, um United States couldn't buy anything from Cuba. They couldn't trade anything. So it was more like, I could get this, you can't. Ha, ha, ha. So it's kind of, sort of, you could say, more so of a preference when it comes to cigars. Most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. Because you, you have people who smoke forever in a day, grand, our grandfathers, mm -hmm. that will not smoke a flavor cigar, like my cigars, like their coffee. I have regular Maduros. Maduro is a darker elite. It's, re it's really, really dark, and it's mm -hmm. heavy. So, you know, older men will like that because that's what they've been smoking. So what I did was uh, pick the Connecticut, found that you can um, actually put flavors in them to hold. And I tried to introduce people who don't smoke to the cigar. Because, like, when you smoke, smell our grandfather's cigar, you're like, oh, you know, we smell like, oh, that's horrible. Mm -hmm. When you smell mine, you smell coffee, you're like, oh, my God, that's a good cigar. And then you want to try it, and then it becomes bigger. So that's okay, okay. So tell us about this because I'm seeing mint as yes. well, yes. and I see that you have the coffee. Yes. So, what would be the proper way to properly smoke a cigar if you were to show us? Okay, so like we was talking about preference. Everything with cigars is preference. It's okay. All on how you like it, how you feel. Some people will cut these, some people, because we have cutters, mm -hmm. we have uh, hole punches, which is what I have here. Um, <clears throat> you have hole punches, cuts. what's that? It's, it's, a, it's kind of like a razor, a little bit. It, Can I see it? Yep. A razor, but it looks like it's just hollow. It don't look like there's anything in there. Because what happens is what we'll do is we'll put this here, sit up here, mm -hmm. and just screw it like that. And usually the um, tobacco will come inside the, the holes like that. Oh. And then when I, when I push this in here, it'll come out. Okay, and I then, see. And then you dispense a bit the way you want to, and then you'll, you'll have like a perfect hole. And this is where you light your. This is where you pull from. You light oh, the end you pull from. So when we wrap, we cover everything, and then you put a hole in it so you can smoke. Oh, for some reason, I thought that you have to cut the end that you cut is the end that you smoke. Yes, that's and what... the other end is the that like I thought that this is the end. You would cut this end. Mm -hmm. You would light the flame on this end. And the other end, you just blow, and it just no. We well, good. You can always tell the just about because it's always closed. They all they all close until we put a hole or we cut it. We cut this part. This is the part the part that we smoke out of, and we light this part. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. 
Let me tell you my first experience smoking a cigar. Well, not as your knowledge. <laughs> I was in Bahamas, uh-huh. my cousin's wedding a few years ago, and they had the booze cruise. You know the booze cruise, Bahamas booze mm-hmm. cruise. They had the cigars on the booze cruise. They're handing out cigars. So I'm like, yeah, I'll take right. I was smoking a cigar before. I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> you started throwing up. No. No? I went back to my hotel after booze cruise, because mm-hmm. have you been on a booze cruise before? Uh, yes. And you know, it's just liquor is passing mm-hmm. around. It's just like, you're just having Mostly a good time. Party, yeah, yeah, you're having a good time. Music is playing, everybody's just having a good time. Mm-hmm. Decided to go to the pool, pool which I have a the adult decision would have been, you know what? I have dinner to go to later on tonight. Let me take a nap before dinner because I've been drinking all day. Not me. Yeah. I decided to go to the pool. And so, you know, I'm going to smoke this cigar by the pool with a drink. They had a pool, a pool bar. That's from up. Went to the pool bar, got a drink, sat by the, uh, on the side of the pool, knowing I'm drunk already, lit the cigar, lit the cigar completely backwards, and had a perfect burn circle on my lip. No. Perfect. <laughs> perfect circle burn on my lip. So. <laughs> Not that I'm laughing at you. Though. No, it, it, it's something to laugh at, because I, I laugh at that every time I think about it. So, and I think I even lit the cigar the wrong way, too, yeah. then. So clearly, thank you for the course no, because no, no, okay. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, so um, like I said, most these cigars are way better than the ones you get from the store. Uh, I don't want to say the names, but mm-hmm. the one that you get in a corner store is no good. Mm-hmm. It's bad tobacco. Is um, uh, They pick it from anywhere, roll it just to get it ready to go. So for those who smoke, don't smoke the ones from any store, mm-hmm. the grocery stores anyway. But what inspired you to start this company? Um, I was uh, I was young, like you know, I was from Brooklyn, mm-hmm. so uh, I was in you know the street, mm-hmm. losing it. So mm-hmm. I had an uncle that was a lawyer, and he was like, "Man, there's like so much out here to see. You know, being in the street is not good." And I was like, uh, "You know, what do you, what do you know?" Because you know, we kids, we like, I'm like, "What do you know?" So one day he took me to um, Fifth Avenue uh, in the city, and you know, I've never been there like, as a young kid, okay. and it was uh, he took me to a cigar bar, and um, I saw black doctors, black lawyers, mm. uh, black writers, black movie people, and I'm like, you know, wow, black people could do it. Because what I, what I saw was, you know, hustlers. I, right. I've never seen a, a, a doc, black doctor. I've never seen a black lawyer, black screenwriter, black business owner. So I went in, he introduced me, and they were real cool. Hey, man, what's going on? How you feel? And I was like, wow, you know, people being nice. You ain't got to look out. And, you know, they smoked cigars, they were drinking, and I just watched them for like hours. And then um, I asked my uncle, can I go back? And he, brought me back and from there I just fell in love with cigars and then when I got older I did so much I worked with record labels I've done um, uh, I have regular jobs and you know nothing stuck but the cigar thing would always ring to me and then I said you know one day I spoke to it, it was like it was meant to be like the universe was pulling me because mm-hmm. I, I had it on my, my brain the whole time and I wound up meeting somebody who had uh, a tobacco field mm-hmm. and I was like and he was Italian Italian guy he was like wow. hey, you want to make cigars I was like yeah I was like you know I was really thinking about it he said hey let me give you a lesson Talked to me about it, took me out to his field in the Dominican Republic. He said, hey, pick whatever you want. Whatever patch you want, and it's yours. And I was like, whoa. And then I, I picked my patch, and from there, and this is it. But how does a person start a cigar company? Because that's something that's very rare. Oh, my goodness. That's and I'm pretty sure it's something that has you have to have a lot of connections to yes. have a successful cigar company. Yes, yes. So how does one start? You got time? How long is it? Listen, <laughs> I'll try we to do. <laughs> I try to shut it up. But um, with New York, uh, if you went anywhere else, I think it'll be a little easier. But uh, in New York, it's a little harder because there's more paperwork. There's more government stuff you got to go through, more red tape. Um, you know, they well, always, do they kind of treat it like, you know, as far as when there's restaurants to get your liquor license? Yeah. Do they kind of treat it in that type yeah, of... Same thing. You got to have a no record. Um, you got to have a, a, you gotta have a, a LLC. Um, you have to have, a, like I said, clean record LLC, um, your own business. Uh, fr- first, you had to have a brick and mortar. You had to have a store. Uh, but they got rid of that just because, you know, um, I don't know why, but when I applied, I didn't really have my store yet. Um, I was going to business with somebody else, but um, they still gave it to me anyway. So when they, they contacted me back, they was like, uh, you know, you weren't supposed to have that. And I'm like, well, you guys gave it to me. I mean, we want to take it back. And they were like, no, uh, you know, keep it. And then after it turns out, I think they just started giving it to people that doesn't that don't have a store. 
So originally you had to have a physical location in order to even have a chance yes. of being in the cigar business within New York. Yes. And, and then um, like I said, I don't know what changed. I just made, just made it. And that's what I said, the universe, because it's like, it was all meant to be. Because, you know, before they would have been like, oh, you don't have one? I'm, I'm revoking that. And they were like, no, keep it. And then I, w- I was good. So I, then I started doing deliveries around New York and Jersey and Bronx and everything like that. And then I opened the store in Queens with my friend, and then um, we kind of just separated because, you know, differs of opinion. So mm-hmm. I said I was going to open my own store. So now I'm back to delivering and um, about to try to get my own store in New York. Okay. So, yeah. But before you had Mr. Cigar, you did have a restaurant. Yes. yes. So how is that transition? How did that transition happen? Like, like I said, everything with cigars kind of go in one. Everything, because like owning a restaurant is kind of like opening a cigar bar. But just different because you have different kinds of cigars. You're still dealing with people. You're still dealing with um, uh, kind of waitresses, but cigar waitresses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's kind of the same. It's just that you're just not you're just not cooking. So it's just uh, you still got to make a recipe because I got to make the recipe for the cigars. Everything mm-hmm. got to soak. Everything got to uh, be in my, my uh, humidifier for three to four months to, to get the flavor in them. So it's kind of it's kind of the same. We kind of lean in the same direction. So you have a physical location right now where Not right people now. can go. No, we're working on that. Um, right now, like I said, I'm, st- I'm still doing deliveries and too, because like I said, New York's kind of expensive. So for a nice location, you know, it could run anywhere from six thousand, and that's just a lot of money for cigars. So. I definitely understand that. And then, like I said, we got so many. I don't know if you got to that point, but <laughs> mm-hmm. we got so many trials and tribulations because we have governors and mayors who are greedy. So now, before you can, I would I would be able to open a cigar bar and have liquor and food in there. So now that they put cigars in the same realm of cigarettes, which you should never do, um, which we're fighting right now, um, uh, there's a there's a bill in the governor's um, table right now that we're trying not to get him to sign because now he want to raise the taxes on cigars. And um, the uh, last governor that was in place, he took away the eating and cigars in the same place, really? which makes no sense because they go hand in hand for years. Mm-hmm. Anywhere you go, you'll see food. Cigars, but because they said no smoking when you eat, they took it away, and it's like no, they meant cigarettes. Why did why did that involve cigar bars? So that's what we're fighting right now. So you mean to tell me, like when you go to certain smoke shops and where people go to buy their smoking products, mm-hmm. um, and they do sell cigars, you have all your smokers' products. That's okay. That shouldn't be like that. Well, if they you just, said regular, regular like cigarettes and cigars should not be in the same, sold in the same place. No, they shouldn't be in the same round. They shouldn't. They shouldn't put cigarettes and uh, cigarettes and cigars going the same way. You know how they have the big fight against cancer and oh, I see, uh, I see and, your point now. You know, saying it's bad for you. Mm-hmm. They say any tobacco is tobacco and it's not. It's not. So we're trying to fight that fight to get it. But what's separate. the difference? Because like cigarettes, you know, they have a filter. They put poisons in cigarettes. Mm-hmm. This is all natural. This is from the earth, just like marijuana. So okay. <laughs> it's not meant Fair. to. It's not meant to hurt you. This thing, like I, I've had people that a uh, hundred years old that buy my cigars. Hundred, a guy that's a hundred years old. Wow. Smoked cigars since he was seventeen. I've been smoking cigars since I was seventeen, and I'm over forty. Okay. So you know, it, it, you, you, it doesn't harm you the way they try to portray it, but they want they're all about money, so they portray it in the same. Realm. So whatever law they make for cigarettes, they make for cigars, and it's not supposed to go like that. So we're trying to hit, cut that wire to kind of build we have by ourselves. Mm. So, yeah. so how long would you say you've been running your company, Mr. Cigars? Uh, um, physically um, on paper, uh, four years. Four years. But off paper, 20 years. Wow. It took, like I said, I started liking it at 17. I tried different cigars. Um, I learned about the cigar. Um, I learned what I like, what other people like. Um, then, like, say, getting a license in is like, because everything takes uh, a month to six months each license, because you have to have six license licenses. So, um, for what six licenses? <laughs> is that just a New York State New York. thing, or it's kind of something all over? Well, all over you have to have a tobacco sales uh, license, but then New York has tobacco sales license, uh, uh, tax one, uh, property one. Is there's so many you got to have just to be here. So that's what I mean. It's hard. So if you want to get into this game, and then for me to get it transported from Dominican Republic here mm. through the airport, that's a license. You know, you, they mm. got to damn near look up your soul to give you that license. Yeah, because those import taxes, yeah. they yeah. get you there. They get you. So all these lights I have to have and, and bondage and all that. So it, it, it took a long time. 
So do you have a farm someplace where you grow your, grow, grow your tobaccos? Yes, in the yard. Um, but it's not my farm. So what happens is with bigger companies, because it's like, um, I don't know if you ever heard of Rocky Patel. I just now. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> he's like the Jay-Z of cigars. Okay. He's nice. the king of cigars. There's, 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 there's a thousand cigar companies out there, and he's like the numero uno. Like, okay. So um, what usually what people do is like, you know, before I had a, like I said about my friend, he, he, he had a patch I bought from him. His, his tobacco was decent. And then I wound up getting into the realm of bigger guys like that. And they just liked the way I moved because I was at a, a function one time and Rocky Patel was like, hey, I like that guy. And I was like, me? <laughs> you know, I'm like, you like me? And he told me to come over <clears throat> to the table. I came over, started talking to me. He said, hey, well, how would you like to put your line on my tobacco? Do you do my next cigar? Oh, wow. I, like, I would not. You know? That's huge. That's huge. So, real nice guy, taught me a lot, and uh, so, to answer your question, so they have the biggest fields in America, it's huge, so, again, they come to you and say, hey, pick a patch, pick a cigar, kind of that you want, and that's what we'll roll your stuff with. So, out of your line, which one of these is a Rocky, like, I, I'm sorry, Rocky, Fertel, Fertel? <laughs> Fertel, 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 yeah, yeah. excuse me if I said your name incorrectly, Rocky. For the Rocky Patel cigar, mm -hmm. which one out of your line, which one is made out of the Rocky Patel? It would be this one. It would be, um, this is, I call it half and half. Half and half. Yeah, what is the mixture of? This is a Maduro, the one I told you about. This is a heavier tobacco. So um, It looks, you could see from even the way that it's made, you can definitely see it. Yes. So this is, is, is a Maduro, really, really heavy. So what I did for some of the heavier smokers, I made it. Heavy here, and then up to here, it gets lighter. Mm. So as you're, as you're hanging out, you're smoking, and it's heavy, it'll get light about right here. So this is why there's two different colored leaves yeah. on there? So this is a Maduro, this is a Connecticut. Hmm, interesting. If, is there a smell to it? Um, it smells like tobacco, this one. It really doesn't have it. Yeah, yeah, it smells like <laughs> tobacco. It definitely does. The funny thing is, like, for people who smoke or people who don't smoke, you know, when you test the cigar to see the strength or if it's a good cigar, you would like hold your nose and put it up there like that and smell it. And you can tell that's the proper way to test yeah. a cigar. Yep. And what do you smell? Because it smells like tobacco. That's when you become experienced because now you smell it. It's like um, wine. You, mm. you can smell the wood that they that they held the wine and you can smell you're right. Yeah, you're the aroma. So it's like different smells you get from it. You can tell if it's a good cigar or a bad cigar. Hmm. So, Interesting. Yep. Nice so, crash course on cigar smoking. <laughs> 101. 101. <laughs> Other than dealing with politicians, what have been some of the biggest challenges you had faced growing your brand? Really, really none. It was, it was like I said, it was an exciting journey for me to do this. I, 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 I can't say I had a problem with none of it. Um, besides the politicians, is it's been great. It's not, and I don't want to sound like like a hater because there is little gnats, <laughs> but it's just some people. Because mm. where I'm from, when I like I said, when I started when I was 17, there were people who accepted everybody if you smoke cigars is about the cigar not about you mm -hmm. and i notice now there's a lot of um especially in new york i don't know about anywhere else they have clicks so i don't like that what do you mean like cigar clicks yes like hey we smoke cubans only over here exactly don't it, bring that over there exactly it's not <laughs> supposed to be like that but a cigar really? love is a you smoke a cigar smoke a cigar. hey what's going on what do you do you know where you from how, how are you you know and you know and you, you keep it pushing but now you got these snobs so they're smoking mm. and they're like what are you doing here? And I'm like, smoking a cigar like you, you know? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, so that's the only thing I don't like about it, because cigars are not from that. They're from being good, being, you know, sold right. to people. Hard but people. a cigar has, like, a feeling to it, from yeah. what I realized. Because when you think about a cigar, you think about that classic. Mm -hmm. Think about that classic chill. Think about kind of like Great Gatsby classic yeah. type. Yeah. That's what you think when you think about a cigar. Yeah. So it's funny that you say there's clicks. Yeah. Cigar clicks. It's, hot, it's hilarious. It's funny that you just said Great, great Gatsby, because I had a party last night. And the um, the theme was great gas when mm -hmm. I had cigars and stuff, and they, they just had a bowl. They loved them. The women were like, "Oh, that's disgusting! I don't smoke." And then as I lit it, and I actually lit a mint, the lady said, "Oh, that's my mint!" Who, who? And then all the ladies kind of ran over there and just started buying up all the really? mints. Yeah, nice. So it, it, it was funny that you just mentioned. That. So I'm guessing the mint ones are the ones that attract are a good seller. One of your best sellers. Uh, pina colada is a good one. When I smoke that, a lot of pina women, colada. Yeah, that is interesting. So what other flavors do you have? Because today we have mint and we have coffee here. Yeah. And we have Maduro. Maduro. Connecticut Maduro. Connecticut Maduro. Mm -hmm. I call it half and half. 
half. Okay, the half and half. Let's just say <laughs> that. We have mint, coffee, and half and half. So what other flavors do you make? Oh, my goodness. Um, I just did a bunch of uh, different flavors. I have pina colada, coconut, uh, mint, coffee, peach rum, Jack Daniels, uh, rum, rum. Um, Oh, really? Yeah, so what are your best sellers that people usually uh, gravitate to when they do purchase your cigars? Coffee, mint, uh, pina colada, um, peach rum. Um, peach, rum. Yeah, peach rum? That is interesting. Yeah, they love peach rum. Yeah. A lot of... Cause, and you know why I did that? It's funny because, again, uh, people started pairing liquor with cigar. So I was like smoking a regular cigar one day with no flavor to it. And I was like, I had a, a margarita. I'm mm -hmm. like, man, imagine you, if you had the same thing. So I went with my guy, and they're just, they're hell bent on not doing flavors. I got to argue with the Dominican guys every time I go in. I'm like, I want to try this. And they're like, no, that's not what it's from. No. <laughs> we got to go back and forth. I'm like, just do it. It's going to work. And then he'll do it. And he go, I don't like it, but okay, here. <laughs> Give it to me. So we, we, we battle in the room all the time. But um, so I, I paired it, and, and now I have a cigar for every drink. So whatever oh, drink you kind of drink, I have a cigar for it. And, and guys and girls started liking it. Like that. that is interesting. Yeah. yeah. So what's the best cigar to drink with the wine today, would you suggest? I probably wouldn't do, I don't think I would. I was about to say I wouldn't do a mint with wine, but it would give that deep breeze taste. Because you ever mm -hmm. had like a real minty gum? Yeah. That's how that is. Like really minty, it'll clean up your nostrils. Really? So it would, that wine, it'll have like a nice breeze, minty taste. So I would do that. That one there. Yeah. Nice and to know. The easier way to think about cigars too is it is exactly like wine. Exactly. The same way you have to ferment the, the, the grapes and hold it and squeeze it and, and let it do its own thing. Same thing with the cigars. The long, this cigar is actually this cigar. So a Connecticut is a Maduro. It's just this one was hung up longer. So it's, it's like a tree. If it go bad, mm -hmm. this is almost to bad. And then we pluck it and roll it. So it, as it ages, it becomes stronger. If you put the so early, what is the process of creating one? So how long, in order like to make like a good cigar, how long would you say you have to wait? Because if it's like wine, mm -hmm. that means it's it's a process. It's a, it's a huge process. Like I said, it's plants. So you got to take care of the plant. And like I said, once you pluck it, it's going to start turning black. It's going to start getting older. And then that's when it gets, uh, it gets stronger. So... Uh, like a good, a good cigar is something that I, I had one that was seven years old. Really? Yeah, and it was really strong. And these guys loved it. So we would go anywhere from 20 years and just, because we store them. And once you store them, you hang them up, you kind of rotate them. And, you, and like I said, you can have them forever. And then roll one and you say, I got a 20 year old leaf. It'll be great. That is interesting. Yeah. So that's why we stuff it was just like wine. So. Within your company, Mr. Cigars, is it only you, or do you have have you had people that you partner with to grow it? No, just me. Just me on the hustle. Um, only I have me and the workers. That's it. So, what are you doing to like put yourself? What have you done to put yourself out there within the cigar world? Well, like I tell people, see, I'm I'm, I'm fortunate because cigars are its own thing. It's kind of its own monster. So, the only thing I did was get in the car with it and kind of move. You know, because <laughs> like I said, it's people that smoke and people who who have uh, been doing it for years. So mm -hmm. all I'm doing is like I said, adding the flavors and adding different kinds of cigars for me being young to see different things. And they're, they're like, okay, I'm a Rocky smoker. I like you and I trust you because you really got to have a personality when you're selling cigars. Mm -hmm. So, because people will smoke it because of you. You know, they, they won't, they'll look at just I'm like, I don't want that, like, who are you? But if you're a good person and you talk and you got a good light, I've had tons of people come to me and say, you have a good light, let me try your cigar. And I haven't said anything to them yet. So wow. it's all in trust with the cigar thing. So they'll smoke it if they like it. Now they have Rocky Patel and Mr. Cigars. They have Rocky Patel and Gorka. You know, you'll be in their little rotation. And that's where you want to be at. So to answer your question, it was easier to get in, have my cigars, have personality, and then just, you know, people try my cigar and pass it on. Because another smoker will trust another smoker. If I said, if I said, hey, this is a good cigar, and I don't smoke, a, person, a cigar smoker will be like, why would you tell me that? Like, I don't even trust you. But if I'm a cigar smoker and I told you, Try that. You'll, you'll be like, you'll grab it. I'll try yes. When they're smoking, you got another person. And another person, another person, another person. Okay. So other than from a cigar smoker's perspective, because talking to you right now, I can see that the, uh, oh, <laughs> you have a passion for this. Yes. You yes, definitely do. It. Because the whole time we're talking, you did not mention anything from a 
on my company from an entrepreneur's perspective, your whole perspective was from a cigar owner's, a cigar smoker mm -hmm. perspective. Mm -hmm. So stepping away from the cigar smoker, <laughs> we're going to go to the owner side of things okay. now. Okay. As an entrepreneur now, mm -hmm. coming into this world, the cigar world, not from the users and not use as much as drugs, <laughs> but as far as the smokers and the cigar smoker end, um, what has been the biggest lesson you have learned being an entrepreneur? Oh, man. Um, a lot. Uh, can't trust everybody. Mm -hmm. Most definitely can. It's sad. I feel bad about that one, but can't trust everybody. Um, stay consistent with my business. Um, you can't slack. You can't. Um, I can't be missing all one day and then a regular person the next day. Mm. The grind got to be constant. Um, I learned uh, a lot, a lot about cigars to, to wind up like, like I said, loving them. Um, and um, I can go on and on about lessons. So, yeah, that's so you said yeah. stay consistent. Stay consistent as far as what? What do you have to do to be relevant? Keep yourself relevant within the cigar world. What um, do you have to do consistent? Like stay on your social media. Uh, I go to every cigar party that I can that that I, I see that to somebody from more. I'll just step in, um, uh, like I said, just talking to people because like it's like a kind of like an underground railroad thing. Mm -hmm. So it was like once your name get in that buzz, everybody knows you. Like one day I went in a cigar bar, and I just came to sit and smoke smoke cigar, and a couple people were just looking at me, and I'm like, am I doing something wrong? Mm -hmm. And they kind of was like, you're Mr. Cigar, and I was I felt great and they're like, you right. oh, I follow you, I heard you, I smoked your cigar in the Bronx. And I'm like, wow, you know? So yeah, just keeping your name up, just going to different, any cigar party, any rooftop that you can smoke on, I go and I'll give out some cigars. Because the first thing I learned um, too was, sometimes you have to give your business away for free. It sounds crazy, but if you have a passion for something you know is gonna make it, you have to not do it for money. And I don't do cigars for money, I do it because I love it. When the money comes, that's great, but you have to love it. So I'll go give a couple out. I'm past the giving out stage, but mm -hmm. I, that's what I did in the beginning. I gave out hundreds of cigars before I started, you know, so uh, to let people try them and things like that. So you, you, have, you have to love what you do in order to do it. Because some people go in, this product I have, I have to sell it. I made it. You know, this is what it is. And that's how you lose yourself because now you're chasing money. I agree with you on that yeah. because everything you said word for word, I agree to 100%. Mm -hmm. Because some people are so focused on I need money, 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 and they don't realize like you have a product. You need people to actually like this yep, product. Most definitely. So this is why there's something called let's work together collaboration. This is why there's something called hey, oh, I think you might like this. Here you go, mm -hmm. because this thing that you gave to somebody, you don't know where this where this will gonna, take you. Yes, most definitely. So I, definitely. I bumped into so many celebrities. I bumped into so many regular people. Yeah, like I said, I stuck my card in the plastic. Um, and they called me, hey, my friend from Jersey gave me your, your cigar and it was great. Can I get an order? If anybody wants to buy your cigars, where exactly can they get it? Do they have to contact you directly or are they in certain stores that they can find it? Yeah, see, that's, that's thinking. That's one of the problems that uh, I come across because people contact me to be in the stores, but then we just lose it because I don't know, you know, it's like so sometimes they're just comfortable with the, the known people. Um, so right now I'm all in negoti negotiation with stores. Um, so right now, yeah, even on my Instagram or uh, uh, Facebook, you will, I have my number and my, e my email up there. And you can contact me. I will either deliver it, ship it, whatever you want to do. What's your Instagram? For um, those of you who are looking for a fine handmade cigar, it's Mister uh, It's Mister underscore underscore cigars with a Z. Mister underscore cigars. Remember that. Yes. yes. Thank you. Contact me. <laughs> you won't be mad. Looking at the, the cigars, they remind me of what, when you go to the corner store, you see them stuff in the corner store. Mm -hmm. It looks like one of those. Yeah. So how can you tell there's a, the difference between a good cigar and a cheaply made one? What is the difference between the two? You can tell, like I said, again, people go on feeling. So you can feel it. It's nice and soft, not too hard. The way it's wrapped, like I said, the, the, the smell test. You're going to mm -hmm. smell it to make sure it's good. Um, and then, like I said, the brand. Because... Um, You'll go, like I said, again, me, Rocky Patel, you know. You know, you, as soon as somebody say Rocky Patel, you'll you see people's eyes light up. It's a Rocky, because you have that, he has a job, he's like Jay-Z, again, and, you know, not to be quoting him. You, you hear an album yeah. drop by him, you're like, I'm going to go cop that, because I know Jay-Z always going to give us something to look to. Same thing with cigars. You, you have to go, your brand have to be alive. It have to be, because with anything I get, my clothes, my jewelry, uh, where I live, 
I'm passionate. I go in and I'm like, that's not right. Do it again. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so now when you get in your hand, you smoke and you're like, wow, I can sell this for pot. I can sell this as a good cigar. So if you, a brand like the ones in the corner store, people know if I said, hey, I'm going to give you a Dutch man, people like, what? Who in the cigar world would beat you up if you said that? I'm you know? pretty sure that yeah, you would. They, they would beat you. They would, like, they would kick you out. You would never they'll put your picture up and you could never come back. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. That <laughs> so is interesting. You, you don't, ever, don't ever get a cigar smoker, a Philly Dutch master, none of that stuff in the corner store. Nothing. But nowadays, you know, in New York, they have smoke shops that have actually name brand cigars in it. Right. That's yeah. what I was asking yeah. earlier. Like, are yeah. they allowed, are they supposed to sell in the same place? And how would you know if you walk into the smoke shop like that, if you're going to, or if you're going to buy one of like the most prestige brands that some of them do carry, yeah. that it's actually a prestige brand and stuff they oh. just put in the box and just put a label over and yeah. set. You could, you could tell because, um, again, if you're a cigar smoker, the labels, uh, the, way, the way, how far the label is up on the cigar, mm. it actually, you know, it's a great item. So, but okay. um, um, some people could tell just from the imprint of the, the name. But sometimes, I don't know if you know about labeling. So you have some flat label ones. A lot of cigar guys emboss theirs. So when it's emboss, it's kind of like 3D. Mm-hmm. So if some of them are not emboss, you're like, wait a minute, you started doing these, you know? But if it's emboss, you know it's a good cigar, you know uh, they have the tags on it. It's like sneakers. So that's what you know, the tags on it. So that's how you would know. So how exactly, because I'm pretty sure right now you have a family and everything like that. Yeah. So how exactly okay. are you able, because it seems like within the cigar world, you have to be invested in it completely. A lot of your time, personal time, have to go into it. Yeah. So, how are you able to balance your personal life and holding being a being able to go to these events, go to the cigar bars to network, go to go away to different countries when you have to go test out different products mm-hmm. to create? Mm-hmm. How are you able to balance it all? Well, you most definitely have to have, and I'm with my with my kids. I most definitely talk to them. I, I had to put on pause for a little while, but as I'm pausing, I still was kind of promoting, sneaking stuff out as I'm raising. I'm like sneaking things out. Hey, hey, do yourself, sneaking things out. And then when they got kind of self sufficient, I um, started really going like pounding it back. I kind of you know, went back full, full, full force on it. So um, it's just about explaining. And if you get it like a good family, you have to have that strong background. Um, and I kind of did everything myself. So um, uh, like I raised my kids myself and everything. So um, that was really hard. And um, they yeah, really understand it. Like once I talked to them, they're like, got it, dad. It was like, got it. It was, it was never like, it was never nothing. Um, uh, they didn't give no pushback. It was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. It was like, I got it. This is what we're doing. We're, we're, we're doing it. You know, I've got to do it. So you, you got to have your own fine balance. And like I said, I meditate, I pray. You know, they meditate, they pray. So we kind of on the same tab. Nobody's different. Everybody's on the boat. Sailing. Sailing, sailing. Yeah. So you're a single dad, I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah. How is, is that? How are you? How many kids do you have? If you nobody asking. Two. Wow. And you're balancing that and doing everything. Yeah. Well, now they're grown, but they, yeah, I did balance it. <laughs> so now they're kind of like, get out of here, dad. Okay. They're doing yeah. their own thing. They're doing now. their own thing. But... It's like, don't just don't burn the house down. <laughs> have people in my house. That's all it is. I actually, they're trying to move out. So I'm going to be, so again, it, it makes it better because I don't, I don't look bad. My age, I'm still strong. I'm, I work out. I do everything else, you know, just to maintain what I'm doing. So again, the universe gets you ready when you're ready. Because I was ready when I was 20, but the universe wasn't ready for me. So I had to uh, keep going and stay focused, and then it wound up opening the doors that I needed to be open. So again, I was, you know, throwing my little seeds out. They were growing, and I'm raising the other two seeds. Mm. You know, so. Well, definitely sound like a blessing. Yeah, yeah. Because. You have this box right here, and this is full of all <laughs> types box. of flavors. Yeah. I got everything in here. Yes. Yeah. The cigar box. This is the, where you keep the goodies in here. It's full of all types of flavors, all types of stuff. And this is opening it. You just like, it's like Candyland for a cigar smoker. <laughs> That's what they call it, too. Oh, really? So cigar bar is called Candyland? Yeah, they go, yeah, give me the Candyland box. Whenever they see my box, they light up everybody. Oh, like, wow. I'm just going to see it. I'm like, I feel like a teacher. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm here. You know, so it's like. The interesting thing about your industry, that you have to be able to venture out internationally mm-hmm. and venture out locally. Yeah. Um, what, would you, what would you tell somebody that's trying to break into that industry that you wish someone told you when you were beginning? 
like I said, Bob, stay focused, uh, you know, stay relentless. Um, you know, um, if it's really your passion, you know, you know, shoot for it. That's what I would tell a person. Because like I said, it's a is a is a uphill battle with skates on and ice. Especially if you're trying to do it in New York. Like I said, if you go anywhere else, it might be a little easier. Because I've been a couple of places, but that's what I would tell them. I would tell them to you just stay focused, keep going, and um, you know, stay in your brand. Make sure you're doing everything. That's what I'm saying. You're doing everything. You're doing everything. You got it. As, as far as, like I said, when you go do the wine and you're smelling the grapes or you're smelling the tobacco, or uh, even if, like I said, when Rocky Patel did it, he actually let you come to his field and his house. I've been to his house. Wow. Big mansion. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, he, he's that kind of guy. He's like, hey, it's, and that's what I loved about him because I'm the same way. And he just was like, there's a million cigar people. There's a million people. But if you make the cigar to what, what, to what the people like, you'll keep your people and there's enough money for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, so don't worry about what this person's doing, that person's doing, just do your thing. So that's what I would tell the person because that's what I was told. Because I was nervous. I was like, uh, man, there's a hundred cigar people. Why are people going to buy mine? You know, and I know people ask that question. What is the difference? What's the difference from Red Rocky? What's the difference from uh, Romeo and Juliet? What's the difference between Gorka? What's the difference between this person and yours? It's just that it's all tobacco. It's just all like I said, the love you put into it, the way you roll it, the different ideas, how strong you might make yours. But it's all the same thing. So people, really, people are buying you. It's not even a cigar. They're buying what they, they like you. So, mm-hmm. and then and then on top of it, having a good cigar, so it's a push. So Rocky was like. There's a million guys out here doing the same thing we're doing. You have to make your thing stand out in their view, and that's a role they have in good tobacco. So that's what I would tell. So that's what I would tell them. I'm just curious, what is success to you? Man, uh, it's a good one. You know, success to me is just being comfortable. If, if that makes sense to you. It does, but elaborate a little bit more. Like, I don't want to be. You know, rich. I don't want to be in a limelight. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want none of that. I want people to enjoy what I do, and I get my satisfaction for that. And I and I just want to be just in a in a real comfortable place because I like quiet. So I, somewhere quiet where my things are working for themselves, and I and I'm and I'm good. Because like I said, I can only extend or or how do I say I, I can only make my kids greater than they already are because they're good. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, they they. They both went to school, they college. I did a good job. So at this, point, at this point, I'm content and I'm great. Mm-hmm. So this is just extra. So if it, if it, if it, when it does, I'm not going to say if When it goes big, that's just another thing that I conquered. So I will be great with that. I'll be, I'll be comfortable. If it makes money, I can sit right on my couch, put my feet up and say, I'm good. I've done everything. That's a very wise response. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Is that through, have, have you always felt like that? Or is that just through, over time, your perspective? Of- no. no, I can't say that. When I was young, like I said, when I was 20 and 17, like I said, I, I went through 50 jobs before I became Mr. Cigar. Like I said, I worked for Sony Records. I worked for Lyle Records. I worked for um, Mike Tyson Records when I was, you know, I don't know if anybody's old enough, but <laughs> Mike Tyson had his own record label, so I worked for him. That is interesting. I, I never knew Mike Tyson had a record label. Yeah, you can That's it. it was called I Am Mike Records, so if you, if you could go on Google. Who was under there? That's interesting. You know what? He he had um, Left Eye from TLC, but then... Are but, you serious? Yeah. He had under his a, label? Under his label. And what happened, for that, I, I don't want to get it, but wow. <laughs> a couple of the people that worked for him kind of took all of the acts and went somewhere else, and, and he was already kind of fallen. So it was already like kind of like band and ship kind of. So I did like a and all work for a little while. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but I've done a lot of jobs. And at one point I was like, man, I gotta be rich. I gotta do all this stuff to be rich, you know? And sometimes, like I said, and, and at that time I neglected my family. At that time, you know, you like I said, you're chasing something. So you want to be rich so bad, you neglect them. So that's what I was doing. And, um, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not pulling my own horn, but blowing my own horn, but um, I pay attention. So, you know, once I felt that I was neglecting my kids and stuff, I kind of drew myself back, paid attention to what I was doing, uh, noticed that a lot of people that I knew that was rich, was dying, wasn't happy, um, mm-hmm. their kids were horrible, you know. They say that. Um, when you meet people in the industry, it's a, a normal thing everybody always says. Like, yeah. um, 
money's not everything. No. It does not make you happy because most of the people who are on top are the lowest people yeah, you've most ever definitely. met. Most definitely. So, and, and like I said, I know, I know, I know, I knew, and I know millionaires now. Like I go in people's house that's supposed to be rich, and you know, sometimes I'll be like, man, I would like to have an echo with. The, the, the living room fully furnished, how do you have that? But it's so big, you hear an echo. And I said, I would like to have it, but it's not that serious, you know? Because, uh, you know, not to put in my business street, uh, I'm sitting here counseling them as we're smoking a cigar, because the cigar could do that. You smoke a cigar, and then now you crying that you're about to get a divorce for the third time, or mm. your kid just punched you in the head, or <laughs> something like that. So I'm like, I've never had that. That's not a black hair right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I counsel them, we smoke a cigar, hug, hug it out, and you know, they back to business, I'm back to business. And, okay. You know. So, let's, what do we have here? So we have a men's cigar, that's Connecticut. Which is this one? Yes. It's not labeled yet, don't worry. <laughs> Why does it have like this cone top right here? That's that's considered a pyramid. A pyramid? Yeah, whenever you see a cone top like that, that's like and some people just like the way that, that whole, like I said, everything is preference, it's done mm -hmm. everything. So, just um, purposely done like that. Yes, because you see mine is circular. Right, so right. A little boxy, and yours is a pyramid, so we just look over there. Okay, so now show me, what, how do I smoke a cigar? Okay. So being that you're new, mm -hmm. <laughs> we we're going to give you a whole bunch. No right? burning lips this time. No burning lips, no burning lips. <laughs> so we would give you, so you like to so use stickers on the top. Just kind of slowly turn it okay. until, it, until you can't see the metal, metal anymore. And then when you, if you smoke another cigar after this, you would learn your, your preference. Like if you like a cutter, if you like a whole bunch, if you like a scissor. So it's a perfect hole. Mm -hmm. so, perfect hole. Yeah. Okay, so how do we, how do we light it now? So what you want to do when you light it is. Oh, that's the, is that the type of lighter you have to have when you have a cigar? Yeah. A special lighter like that? And we're going back to preference. Some people, like our, our new guys, we like torches, but our grandfathers and fathers would do matches. And I do matches when I'm in the house or a certain cigar box because it kind of gives the cigar a, a different taste. Because mm -hmm. it's like how you barbecue, and some people use wood opposed to charcoal. Mm -hmm. Charcoal kind of gives that charcoal taste, the wood gives a kind of a burn taste. Yeah, so that same, nice smoke taste. Yeah, exactly. So cigars are simply a lot of old school people do matches, a lot of new school people do torches. Mm -hmm. so, Preference again. Okay, so today we're at new school ways for doing the torches. So you will pick it up. Okay. Most okay. people, you can hold it that way. I hold one like this. I'm gonna hold it like this, like a boss. <laughs> yeah. like like. Just watch your fingers. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah no burn, right. nothing's burning. So I'm gonna. No, I think you should like your first. Like, right. I can see. Okay, so what I do is people always ask me why do I leave this little lid here? I leave it there so the fire can catch it and it can burn the whole cigar. It's gonna burn anyway. I just. Mm -hmm. My little thing, my little thing, like that, my little thing. So a lot of people do it, but I, I, this is the reason why I mm -hmm. leave that on. So you want to, you know, put it in your mouth. <laughs> As you to say, pause. But I'm um, putting it in your mouth, and some people rotate. I don't really rotate my mouth okay. because it, it makes the whole thing burn. So canoe. Oh, you know, oh, they canoe? Yes. You know what canoe is? Yeah. Is. Some people don't know what canoeing is. So canoeing is basically when it burns on one end. Okay. Yes. <laughs> See, I know something. <laughs> so a lot of people don't like that. So they, they'll turn it to it uh, like the whole circle. Um, I I just keep my hand on the pole until it goes. Okay. So torch. You don't inhale it, right? Just you push it up. Okay. I feel like I'm gonna <coughs> cough because I'm gonna inhale it. I'm gonna say. You smoke. No. Yeah, I think I 
That was an L. It's a big, it's a quick pull and pull out. And for most cigars, you want to be relaxed. So like, you know, you got to go have some effort. So I look like I know what I'm doing. No. Okay. For real. How do you get that? You got to work on your pull. You got to work on your pull. I need to fight. Slowly inhaling it, that's why. You smoke cigarettes? I think that's like a natural like thing to just do. Yeah, for some people. That's why I say you gotta master the cigar. These just in your mouth because you because what people don't realize is that you have pores in your mouth, right? You have pores. So look it up, medical thing. You have pores in your mouth. So if you if you pull the cigars right in your mouth, you can do this. Can you do this? Can you do cigar? Because I'm not I'm not an uh, expert. Roll the turn. So, like I said, when you want, you have pausing in mouth. Yes, thank you. You have pausing in mouth, so when you inhale the cigar, it's kind of dancing around. The smoke is already dancing around your mouth and just pulling it out. And that's how you kind of get a buzz from the cigar as you're drinking your wine and your tequila and your Hennessy. But it kind of like, again, lipstick on my, on my hand is there. But it kind of like, you're supposed to take it, hold it back, and just, just like take it. The... You have to mask that. Like, up. <gasps> no, no. Left by hand. So, like, when you pull it up, you're pulling, right? Oh, just pull and blow. Just pull and blow. No. There you go. So we gotta get you to be cool on the, on the, on the release. I know, right? I'm like, <laughs> so <laughs> amateur with this. Yeah, don't worry, you get it. Just smoke right now. Okay. Well, I just got my cigar lesson. I just sat with Mr. Cigar himself, Creston White, the owner, founder of the cigar company that we are smoking right now and my cigar is canoeing crazy, Mr. Cigar. Definitely check us out every Tuesday new episodes and look out for dope entrepreneurs like Mr. Cigar. Thank See you, you next much. time.